All right, today what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up on a question that I solved in the conservation of mass and it is a section B to what and ask you what is the force required to hold the pipe in place. Okay, so what's going on over here is we have a inviscid velocity profile or uniform velocity profile like sec section one. I have kind of like a black box over here and then it transfers into a viscous velocity profile where u, u is a variable velocity, u can be here, u can be there, u can be there as well, okay? u max is the maximum velocity that I get at the center line, and this is the parabolic equation that gives me my velocity. Let's say that I'm interested in u right in the middle over here, then I'm going to insert r is equal to capital R divided by 2, okay? And go to read my u value. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to put a link to this video, okay? Um, but I'm not sure it's going to show up in the Canvas page. I know it does show up in the YouTube if you go to the YouTube path, but in the Canvas page, I'm not sure. So please see video 5.5, kind of a long question, so I want to take a shortcut. I already demonstrated over there that my V1 will be equal to U max by 2, okay? So when you look at it, actually I drove to the scale as well. You can see this maximum is, you know, like half of it over here. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna pick that up from here. I'm not gonna revisit this conversation. Okay, but the steps that we need to take is number one to read the question. I read the question. Here's what it says: find the force required to hold the pipe in place. And if you stop over there in the exam, what will happen is, well, you'll be stuck. Oh, I don't know my U max, and should I just go ahead and ignore my pressure difference? No. I'm asking you as a function of u max and the pressure drop between 1 to 2, okay? All right, let's go back. And second step is the selection of the control volume. And in here, what I did was I went ahead and drove that for you. So this will be this orange line. And that's all you need to do for me to understand what you're talking about, okay? Step number three is to look at the assumptions for this particular case. So let's go down and write that. This is important, assumptions. And what I'm going to get is, is this steady? Yes, I don't see any time dependence in the question. Is this constant density? Yes, because I gave you the water, okay? Is this uniform flow? Well, I'm going to call it uniform at one. At cross section one okay so I would say like we have like two and a half uh, special case over here okay the next step is to assess what basic principles I need to use okay so the question although I, I told you to go visit 5.5 but I'm gonna pretend we didn't do it um, do I need to relate the velocities over but you have to do the conservation of mass as well because you can see I have a relation between there's a V1 over here, there's a U max over here, and you can understand that. Do you see? I don't even have a V1 over here, right? I'm, I'm telling you, hey, find V1. That's a hint to you, okay? And I'm going to do that by using the approach that I take in 5.5, which is the conservation of mass, okay? And I find my V1 is equal to U max by 2. Um, am I going to need the conservation of momentum? Well, of course. That is the only equation that gives me the force information. Remember, conservation of mass doesn't have force. Conservation of energy doesn't have force in it as well. And the only one that I have where I ask your force is conservation of momentum. I understand that I have used conservation of mass and conservation of momentum. How about the order of those two? Well, as I recommended, I always use the conservation of mass first. Because if you use the conservation of momentum, you will have this unknown of force required to hold the pipe in place. So it's not going to be helpful to you. Especially in this case, you freak out because this is fairly complex so okay let's write over here what I talked about one is conservation of mass and again let me go over here and say that see video 5.5 and from here I get myself v1 is equal to u max by 2 so the good thing is um, I get rid of this variable called v1 which was not given to me okay that's the first step and the second step is obviously to do the conservation of momentum. Conservation of momentum is a vector equation. So I need to look at what is the directions that I pick. Okay. Obviously I have an R in here. And if you look at this, the theta is this way, right? 
and I call this, you know, sometimes people call it X, some people call it Z this way. So I'm going to go ahead and call basically this direction to be Z direction. I'm going to write my equation in the Z direction because that's what the force is going to be. Okay, so, and I said that the first thing that I highly recommend you to do to, is to draw the free body diagram. It's very similar to your dynamics courses, right? You may ask me, what am I drawing the free body diagram of? Well, I can tell you right away, it will be the free body diagram of the control volume, okay? So it's like this. Um, I'm just replicating that orange line. And over here is, I have a black box, but that's a, a detailed uh, schematic. I always tell the students that you will have, you will assess three types of forces. Force number one is the pressure forces, okay? This is within a pipe. You can not ignore the pressure, okay? So I'm going to call this P1, A1, and I'm going to call this P2, A2. Did you see? It's pushing it in because compressive stress is positive in the fluid mechanics or the pressure, all right? So P1, A1, P2, A2. Not that A1 is equal to A2, but I'm writing general. The second thing that I do is whether I have viscous forces, okay? So in this problem, if you think about it, I mean, I can incorporate that because I know the shear stress is equal to viscosity times the rate of change of velocity, but there are a few problems in this approach. Um, that's just the shear stress, so then I need to multiply by the surface area. I wasn't given the surface area, right? Was I given this length? No, not really. And also, you can see over here, I don't know what happens, uh, you know, what is this distance from here to here? There's an entrance length. I mean, we'll talk about this in module 11, but it doesn't just magically go from here to here in real life, okay? So it's a bit complicated, so I'm going to ignore the effect of viscous forces over here to your assumptions section and please leave, your, leave some space don't do it like me where I'm kind of squeezed in um, I'm gonna call this in with it okay and okay so I'm not gonna have any force there the third type of forces are the gravitational forces or magnetic forces as well so body forces okay obviously I'm not gonna use the effect of magnetic forces but I may use the effect of gravitational forces let's assess that my weight is equal to specific weight times the volume, right? Yeah, I wasn't given the volume, right? Even if I have the weight, what would be the direction of it? If you want, you can actually go out and put it down. Hey, that's your weight. That, so that's not aligned with the x direction. So just put it in. You don't have to have an assumption there as well, okay? And what else? I already went through the three type forces and obviously the fourth force is the force that I have to incorporate into my what's being asked this is the force required to hold this in place so I'm gonna call this F Z so now question is did you see did I really assess whether uh, you know okay this is friction this way this is F Z should be that no I simply go out and aligned my force required to hold this in place with the positive z direction because the mathematics will tell me okay but this is not an algebraic question so it's not going to help me let me ask you a question over here if c is equal to p2a2 minus p1a1 yeah that would be fairly wrong right you're taking this as a static this is a pipe you can't do that so i have to incorporate the effects of the momentum so summation of the forces in the z direction will be equal to over the exits exit is uh, will be written with an integral Rho V Z E V N E A E minus summation sign. Um, I only have one in that, but let's just for the generalization of the answer. Rho times V Z inlet V N inlet A inlet. Why did I write over here as an integral while while I put summation sign over there? Well, that's the question dictates that. Section two is the exit. And it's non-uniform, so I have to have an integral. Section number one is uniform, so I don't have to use integrals, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and write the Fz, summation of the forces in the z direction. So you can see here that Fz is in aligned with the positive z. That's what I'm being asked to find. P1A1 also aligned with the z. P2A2 is aligned with negative z. So I'm simply going to go ahead and write what I just said. It's going to be Fz plus P1A minus P2A. Did you see that? I didn't differentiate A1 and A2 because they are the same for this particular problem. It's a constant diameter 
pi with the radius of capital R. Okay, so I do know my a then is pi r square. Okay, I'll come back to that. That's on the easier side. Let's deal with the big elephant in the room, which is this term, right? That is the hardest one. If you follow video 5.5, I explain why there's only one uh, integral over here, and that's going to be from 0 to capital R, okay? Density times Vz exit. So if I look at the exits, the velocity are always aligned with the z direction. Look at that. Inlet, z direction. Exit, z direction. Anyways, the way that I pick my control volume, Vn's will always be positive, and the Vn's will be the velocity component itself. So then, if you think about it then, Vz will be equal to Vn, right? In this particular case, u max, in parentheses, 1 minus r divided by capital R square, and then square of it, 1 for Vn, 1 for Vz, right? Please note that I made a minor mistake over here. I forgot the dA. So it's going to be dA, which is going to be 2 pi r dr, right? Um, so let's write it over here. 2 pi r dr. Where is 2 pi r t dr coming from? I explained it in section video 5.5. It is the drawing over here. This is the dr, is the thickness of the strip. And then the surface area is 2 pi r times the dr when I lay it open under the table like this, okay? Um, all right, fine. And then minus sign, right, for the inlets. And that's going to be rho, which is a constant value. Vz inlet will be u max by 2. Do you remember that? V1 is equal to u max by 2 from the video 5.5 times. What is Vn? Well, same, u max by 2. What is A? It's going to be pi capital R square. So the Fz plus p1 minus p2 times pi r squared divided by density. I want to just, uh, as much as possible, leave the right hand side alone because it's kind of complicated. Look at it. Density is multiplied by this over here. This whole thing is multiplied by density. This is multiplied by density. I move it over here. At the end, I'm going to move it to the other side because I'm being asked what is fc. But I want to clean that up as much as possible because it's not good. Okay? So what would be the u max square? Can I take it out of the integral over there? Absolutely. That's going to be u max square outside. Okay. So take a look at it there here. Can I take 2 pi out of the integral as well? Oh, yeah, I sure can. Let's take it out. And integral. Unfortunately, now I have to deal with the integral, which is left with 1 minus r divided by capital R squared squared r dr. There's another r as well. Interesting. Minus rho is gone so that becomes rho pi r square times u max square by 4 right all right so what i'm gonna do is instead of rewriting this over and over again i'm just gonna take a look at this and come back and insert i'm gonna change the color so we i don't know a fresh mind is always good right so what is 1 minus r divided by capital r squares squared so it's going to be, if you think about it, I'm just going to use like this, a plus b squared. Although b is kind of fancy in here, r divided by r squared, it's going to be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, right? I'm just going to write that. Minus, though, remember, this is minus. So uh, minus 2r over capital R squared plus, that is the square of it, so it's going to be r over capital R to the power of 4. So that is the parentheses, then I'm going to multiply this by r dr, okay? So then let's write one last step before I evaluate this integral. You can see in here I get myself r minus 2 r cube divided by r square plus r to the 5 divided by r capital R to the 4 dr. Did you see what I did? I simply moved this r inside of these terms. That becomes r. Let's double check whether I made a mistake. Minus 2r cubed divided by r squared plus r5. Yep, I, I look like I'm doing okay so far. What will be r dr? That's going to be r squared over 2, right? Minus, this is going to be 2, r to the 4 divided by 4, r squared, plus r, wow, r to the 6 divided by 6, r to the 4, 
Actually, I don't need the integral sign, right? I already took the integral. And that is going to be ablated from 0 to capital R. So the second thing that I will do is to evaluate at zero. You can see over here that the whole thing is gonna vanish, right? Zero, zero, zero. So I seem to gonna put R and call it a day. Let's do it. R capital R squared over two minus two times capital R to the power of four divided by four R squared plus R to the six divided by six R to the four. So you can see this becomes sec square of it, square of it. So there's something's happening in here. This becomes basically one half r square, right? There's a minus, this becomes r square over two. So these cancel each other. So I simply get from this integral all I get r square over six. Okay, so I'm gonna basically pull this up and plug it into here. So this this whole thing becomes capital R divided by six. By the way, I see another uh, type over here. See, I when I move the density to here, then this density shouldn't be there. Okay, because I was trying to uh, clean this up. So okay, so what I'm going to do now is let's write this one more time. Fz plus p1 minus p2 times pi r square divided by density will be equal to is r square divided by 6. You see 2, this becomes 3, right? So I got myself u max square. Basically, there's a one third in the beginning, pi r square, right? And then the last term becomes minus u max square over 4 pi r square. Okay, then I'm going to multiply this by 4, this by 3. I'm, 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 I look ha I'm happy now. I'm almost there. Plus, p1 minus p2 is I call this delta p 1 to 2, right? Pi r square. Let's move density to the right hand side, so now I'm comfortable. What will be these numbers? Uh, 4 minus 3 divided by 12. So that's going to be 1, 12, density, pi, r square, u, max, square. So let's leave the fc on the left hand side. fc will be equal to, you can see pi r square is common, right? So I'm going to take pi r square parentheses. So it's going to be pi r square times, right? It's going to be rho over 12, u, max, square minus delta p 1 to 2. So you can see the fc 